Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. My name is Scott Gansky. I am the Director of Education at YSA. I'm here today to talk to you about the 2014-2015 uh, State Farm Student Achievement Program. Uh, something that uh, has been around for a while and, and we're really excited about this upcoming year um, and excited about uh, so many of you that are interested in, in applying. So before we get started, I just want to talk about um, some of the, uh, the, the program benefits. What are, what are some of the things that uh, this program you know, makes it unique and, and special? Um, just some of the breakdown of the basics. It's, uh, it's a $1,000, up to $1,000 grant. Um, for one classroom semester of service, um, or it's uh, up to $4,000 uh, for school districts um, and or groups um, of teachers um, that want, will be implementing a semester of service. Uh, ultimately, it could be more than four teachers um, that could share the 4000 but ultimately um, you have that option of applying as an individual um, or applying as a group. Uh, one of the things that uh, is included is professional development. Um, and a program orientation, uh, which takes place uh, sometime in the fall. Um, we're, we're pretty much looking uh, like early November uh, and late October, um, but it really also depends on where some of the applications come from. Uh, travel expenses are paid for. Uh, that includes, uh, if you're driving, that would be a, a travel reimbursement for mileage. Um, and if you're in a far, uh, an area that's further away, um, that could even include a flight or a hotel um, if needed. Uh, special emphasis is uh, really going to be looking at uh, if you're looking at Common Core or whatever your, your state standards are. Um, we're also looking for projects that have an emphasis on career and workforce readiness skills. Uh, the additional benefit of this program is that it uh, consists of ongoing um, consulting, um, technical assistance uh, from our YSA education experts. Um, that includes phone calls. Um, really just being there as a support system um, for the school year um, to help you with really any kind of questions or, or you know, professional development or thing that, uh, things that you're looking for uh, throughout the year. Uh, so eligibility, um, we're looking at K-12 through public school or public charter school teachers uh, across the U.S. Uh, and select Canadian provinces, which uh, the provinces are listed on YSA uh, org slash student achievement. Uh, you need to have a plan uh, to incorporate service and learning into your classroom. Um, again, th these are this is your plan. Your you know to the best of your knowledge. Obviously, you know you're you're applying in the in the springtime, uh, really for when a group of students would be uh, coming in the uh, the fall. So obviously, you're doing the best that you can to try to have uh, have it ready. Uh, the, you're going to want to identify one to three uh, high-stakes uh, academic objectives. Uh, that could be statewide or common core. Um, not, not, uh, not just a copy and paste of objectives, but really what are those main core objectives um, that you want to emphasize or, or focus on, and really how are you going to address them? Um, how are you going to link them uh, to the service project? Uh, you can apply in partnership with three or more teachers. So that could be a school district, that could be your school, that could be another a teacher that, uh, that you've worked with in the past. Maybe it's someone in the same city. Um, really looking for uh, groups of teachers uh, to apply, which is, uh, you know, that really strengthens sustainability and scale if you're really looking to build that. Um, but again, that's something um, that we're looking for but not required. And uh, while it is a nationwide program, uh, there is special consideration um, for teachers in Atlanta, uh, Dallas, and Phoenix, um, uh, which is also one of the some of the cities that where the um, regional trainings uh, would take place. Uh, but of course, if you're in, if you're in other cities, uh, you are absolutely eligible. Um, we're really just looking for uh, strong applications um, around the country. Um, so really, there's five easy steps we're going to cover today, and then I'm going to give it, get, you know, spend a little bit of time um, answering any questions uh, that you might have. Um, the first is obviously going to ysa.org slash student achievement, uh, reading that program overview, uh, downloading and printing the rubric, and we're going to go through all these, uh, starting your application and uh, submitting a budget. It's, it's a really uh, pretty, pretty easy process, um, and we'll go through it here right now. 
so what is a semester of service? A uh, semester of service is a, is a 14 uh, plus week, uh, really rigorous um, service learning process of really where you're linking an academic objective to a meaningful service project. And if you're really looking for what types of examples or what does a high quality uh, you know, semester of service look like, um, what you can do, and this is my suggestion, uh, would be go, to go to our website, uh, www.ysa.org slash projects. And by doing that, what you're essentially going to be doing is um, you, can, you can actually, if you see in the middle here, it says you can search by um, project leader. Um, so if you do that, you're going to want to click on, scroll down to teacher. Uh, once you do that, what's going to happen is you're going to see uh, a whole bunch of different projects that will pop up. Uh, you're going to want to select one that maybe relates to uh, the type of topic that you would be doing. Uh, we selected these, so you can pretty much pick on any one of pick any one of them, and they are uh, pretty high quality. They're going to go through the whole IPARTC process, um, and, and usually ones that were done over a 14 plus uh, week time period. Um, so if we were to click on one right here, like if you look on the bottom, Hunger Across History, if we were to click on that, what you would see is uh, a nice little uh, description on top of, of, of really what the project was about. Um, in most cases, we'll have a video um, of a site visit that we took to that school. And then if you look at the bottom, that is going to give you the whole IPARTC process that uh, that particular um, group of students and teacher uh, used during their semester of service. So you can see in this case the students focused on childhood hunger, they researched the problem in the beginning phase during that kind of that front-loading phase. Um, they partnered with another class, this was a high school, they partnered with eighth grade students um, and, and did a food, school-wide food collection and a pasta fundraiser, um, but really that collaboration part. And then the action was inviting the eighth grade students to join them um, in one, another one of their events, as well as trainings. Um, they wrote, you know, academically, they wrote individual reflection journals, as well as reflection posters. Um, and for these, what they ended up doing was um, focusing on um, really the history of hunger, um, doing almost a, a demonstration uh, exhibition where they presented um, the findings of, of what hunger looked like throughout time, which um, linked to their history curriculum, um, which, as you can see, is, is quite academic. If you wanted to see a youth in the driver's seat, one of the things just to, to remind you is that up to 12 uh, individual grants um, will be given to uh, teachers and students that are focusing on teen driver safety. Um, this is an example of, of, of a group of students at uh, Sockham High School um, where really they really took a positive uh, approach um, to trying to stop teen driver safety. Um, we definitely, when it comes to youth in the driver's seat projects, we're not looking for scare tactics. We're really looking for projects that can really reiterate the positive things that uh, youth in the driver's seat uh, can do. Um, and in this case, they really did do that by looking at statistics and really finding a positive pledge that uh, students could do. So going back over these steps, and we're going to go step by step here in a second, is remember you just go to ysa.org slash student achievement, read the program overview, uh, download and print if needed the rubric. Uh, start your application, and remember you can start and start and stop and start and stop because you will get a username and password, and then finally submit your budget. So uh, the achievement uh, program right here, if you actually see, this is, the sh this is the page that you'll see when you log in, and you'll see where it says program benefits, it says download the complete program overview. That gives you a breakdown of everything really that this program, this grant is all about, including some of the things that I talked about earlier. You'll also see that there is a, this is the program overview that will, will open up um, and you'll be able to download it and really go through um, all of the different uh, priorities of uh, the State Farm Student Achievement Program. Then we have our grants rubric, which breaks down all the different things um, that, you know, that, that we're looking for in a high quality application ultimately um, you know, giving us a nice description of the activities and really how you'll link it to student um, achievement is important. Then there's the bottom, on the bottom of that page you're going to see apply now. If you click on that it will open up 
what's called WiSci, which is our grant management system. When you click on that, you'll be able to, if you are logging in for the first time, you're going to want to click on the sign up button, your email, uh, your password, and you know a new password for yourself to confirm. Um, one of the top questions I hear a lot is that people forgot their password. On this page, you'll see right on the upper right there, it says forgot password if you click on that, if you're logging in again uh, to complete your application, which is right there. The next thing is uh, really some basic information we're asking first, last name, email address, title. Um, we're really just looking for uh, some of the basic information at first. Um, it, this application really doesn't take that long to fill out from what I've been told by most people. It's um, less than 30 minutes to fill out the entire um, application. Um, we're going to want to know um, basic information about your school. Remember, you need to be a public or a public charter school in order to be eligible for this grant. Um, as well as some of the information about your school district for your reduced lunch numbers um, and things of that nature. Uh, the most important thing is going to be this program summary um, so you, where you can really give me a nice overview of what you're uh, you know, proposing for the next year. Just kind of keeping in mind that um, we understand that you're a teacher and that things can change um, and we want to be flexible and support you. Um, but really, in order to make this a competitive grant, we want to make sure that you're, you're proving to us that you're not just copying and pasting academic objectives, but you're actually saying a specific objective that you would like to address um, and specifically how you would like to um, make sure that that is linked to a meaningful need in the community. Um, and also, just remember, um, some of the things we're looking for when it comes to these meaningful service activities are things that really, so there's a difference. So if you're looking at a garden, which is a campus beautification project, that's probably not something that we would be interested in funding. But if you're looking at something like a, a community garden, where you're actually bringing people in from the community to see it, maybe you're educating, maybe it's fifth graders educating first graders about the garden, then that's something that is actually showcasing that the students are owning that garden and they're taking it to another level. Um, also, just looking at data, pre and, are, are students giving pre and post surveys? Are they collecting soil samples or water samples? Those are the types of things that definitely um, are easier to link, but um, we've also seen some really creative ideas, which is exciting, too. One of the things that you're going to want to do um, is, you know, once you decide um, on the budget, and the budget, again, is easily amendable. Um, you can make changes to it if you are awarded this grant next year. We just want you to give us our, your best you know, guess on what you think the money would be spent on. Um, and just remember, you, know, you can't exceed $200 for like refreshments or recognition events. But you do want to just make sure that you're um, paying attention to what it says it, expenses may or may not include. Uh, and, and you're going to want to select the file on the bottom there. Uh, and just remember that it needs to be a, um, an Excel doc. Uh, that's the most common thing that people forget to do is, is when they select file, make sure that it's an Excel doc. Um, and once that goes through, you should be able to submit. There's two different spots where you can submit a budget. One is as a group, and then one is as also as that individual. So um, those are just two different places where you can do that. The deadline is going to be June 6th at 5 o'clock PM, um, Eastern Daylight Time. So if you, um, you know, obviously if you have questions about that particular deadline, please, uh, please let me know. And um, if you're in a large, uh, a large group, um, you can also look at um, maybe scheduling a phone call with me um, so you and your group can apply. Um, but you're going to want to do that at least a few days notice for me so I can schedule something. Okay. And right now I'm going to see if anybody uh, has any questions. Um, if so, there's the little hand raising tool that you'll see right on your screen. Um, and the first question that I'm seeing is, is this going to be recorded? And the answer to that is yes. Um, I will be posting it sometime probably uh, tomorrow. You can type in your questions. Actually, it might even be a little easier if you just type in your questions on the bottom there. That would be just fine. Um, another question was, if, is it OK to apply as a group of five? Yes. 
Um, if you apply as a group of five, though, um, and you're outside of the, um, like, for example, if a regional training is taking place in Dallas-Fort Worth, and there's five of you that are in, uh, let's see here, in Oklahoma or something, really, like, the, the funds would really cover for four of you to attend, um, for four of you to attend the regional training, um, but the grant can be shared amongst uh, the number of you. An administrate can an administrator be one of the group members? Um, it's a really good question. Uh, it really depends on the role that the administrator is playing um, in facilitating the project. Um, if it's if if you're saying like a principal, I mean, I'm not sure how the principal would be facilitating the project. But if it's like a curriculum coach, then yes, um, absolutely. Now, an administrator. Let's say there's. It, it also depends if you're an administrator and you have four other people on your team. Um, then yes, you can actually absolutely be part of that um, part of that uh, as a group member. Uh, yeah, and another really great question: uh, Can a nonprofit um, apply um, if they're working with a school? And the answer to that question is yes, as long as the school is a public or a public charter school. Uh, then yes, you are eligible um, to apply. Uh, you just want to make sure that you have the uh, permission um, of the principal of that school. Because um, essentially, that is they, that is the person that would be signing uh, the memorandum of understanding uh, if you are awarded the grant. Uh, someone asked, "What is the amendment process?" Um, talked a little bit about that earlier. Uh, so the amendment process, if you if you receive a grant, um, is essentially to work directly with me. Um, and that's a way that you can send to say, and an example of that would be um, that you, for example, had budgeted $300 for bus transportation originally, but now you're realizing you need $400 and you're going to take that amount for materials. Um, it's really as easy as that, um, and we know as long as it's part of contributing to a meaningful service, um, those are pretty easy uh, changes to make. If you're applying as a group, this is another really great question. If you're applying as a group of two, I would just apply um, individually, and then just each individually apply for a maximum of $1,000. Um, it just makes it makes it much easier for you to apply individually. You can note in your application that you know you're um, you're working with or collaborating with another school, um, but as far as applying together, um, I would you're you're going to need to apply individually. These are all really great questions. And as you can see, um, my email address uh, is right on the bottom. It's sgansky at ysa.org. Um, you can email me at any time, um, as well as any questions that you have while you're submitting your application. I um, want to make sure that you go in there uh, and do that as soon as possible. That way, uh, you leave yourself enough time to, uh, just in case you do have any problems, that we can, we can fix those. And like I said earlier, um, just really, no matter where you're applying from, we definitely encourage, um, I know we, we definitely have some cities that we were uh, listing as priorities, but we will be funding projects from all across the country. So we definitely encouraged um, to apply. Um, and if you are funded and you do live in, out, you live outside of areas where our regional trainings will take place, um, we do have the funds to fly you in and stay at a hotel if necessary. Okay, well, I'm not seeing a lot of uh, questions, any more questions here, which is, I think, a good thing. With how many, with a lot of people on the webinar, it's a good thing. Uh, so if anybody, um, I'm going to stay on for a little bit longer, but make sure to, to let me know if you have any other questions. Uh, a couple other questions here. Um, uh, as, as long as, um, so if a school is doing something off of campus, as long as it's part of a school-affiliated program, um, that's okay. Uh, venue price is, is not something that is typically used in grant funds, and if it was, it would be very minimal. Um, but it really depends on a case-by-case -case, um, scenario. So I, whoever, whoever asked that question, I would need you to email me a little bit more uh, details about that particular 
um, venue and what you're looking at. You know, any sort of per diems or guest speakers, um, funds cannot be used for those. Um, but as far as venues, you know, because it's a one-time type thing, we, we definitely, that would have to be a case-by-case -case, uh, situation. Okay, well, I'm going to stay on for a few minutes longer, um, and I can always answer any more questions that you have. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you guys so much. I look forward to uh, reading your applications. Uh, and if you have any other questions, again, do not hesitate to email me at sgansky at ysa.org. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Thanks so much, everybody.